Ignorance is bliss, and human culture seems to ignore key points from the historical past as we hammer the jigsaw into the picture that makes little sense. Time, it seems, is what we don't understand, and this snowballs the ancient constructions that we simply assume is within our reach in terms of existence. The construction techniques, chronology, and function of monuments scattered across the world that are dating to the distant past remains unknown. We surmise of what these things would have been by addressing the current setting we see them in without considering a past setting which could have been transformed to what we see today. We know it's wrong and at the same time we can't grasp this lost understanding. Is this because it was us who came later, after the last wave of existence? It isn't exactly a secret that structures are found in their very many thousands on every part of our planet that can only be seen from the sky. From Nazca in Peru to remote parts of Kazakhstan and Saudi Arabia, geoglyphs are highlighting the ground on epic and monumental scales that cannot be seen from the ground. This has overwhelmed the understanding process because these things do not meet the impressions that is ingrained into our minds of how the ancient world was. These things that we don't understand are by design, meant for aerial observations. But how can that be since we are talking about thousands and thousands of years into the past, back to a time when we were barely even conscious? Yet. On this planet, we are confronted by structures that meet mathematical precisions that have blown the minds of researchers for decades now. You gotta ask the question as to why we don't have the answers. Wait till you hear this. The megalithic monuments in Saudi Arabia have remained in the shadows as we have been obsessing over the Near Eastern countries like Egypt and Jordan as the fascination with an ancient past has seemingly belittled our understanding process and stopped us in our tracks that has put humanity on a path of rediscovery. Questions like who we are, how did we come into being, and more importantly, who were here before us are starting to waken up our people to a very sobering fact that cannot be overlooked. That being the advancements present on Earth and set in stone from a previous civilization that has since evaporated into thin air. There literally is no part of this planet untouched by this ancient and advanced culture. And this is a staple point in the confusion of our rediscovery clashing with what is drilled into us from our first day in a classroom to the highest levels of the education system. Statements like, the ancient Egyptians built the pyramids, needs to be dissolved if we are to learn the true nature of these monuments and the earthlings that are responsible for them. You must consider that it is only stone that is surviving this long process of time. Nothing else can withstand this process as the earth simply reclaims and recycles things back to where they were taken with the exception of the stone that has been carved from the earth that is already set in the desert sands of Saudi Arabia. A 35 meter long triangular platform has been found that looks like a platform from a landing craft and it is thought to be an astonishing 8,000 years old. Described as a place of ritual sacrifice for nomad pastoralists, thousands and thousands have been discovered with the birth of aerial archaeology, but little have been explored, that is, until now, with an effort from the French, Italian, and Saudi Arabian archaeological projects uncovering this ancient triangular platform hidden beneath the sands of time for 8,000 years or more. The notion that pastoralists lived in small nomadic groups and couldn't have been behind monumental prehistoric constructions has basically been abandoned with such discoveries. 
Gobekli Tepe, for example, is dating back more than 11,500 years ago. Totally buried, and this does suggest a cataclysmic event covered it with debris from a projectile before the mud from the flood smoothed it over, and this does attest that their societal structure worked. Nomadic hunter-gatherers were capable of great collective efforts. This suggests they were more advanced than ever our wildest imaginationed, and in fact, we are not crediting these ancient earthlings, rather insulting their very existence by suggesting it was anything less than an advanced setting. The prehistoric monumental ruins at the oasis settlement of Dumat al-Jandal are not unique in that sense. Thousands have been found in the Arabian Peninsula and the Southern Levant since the advent of satellite imaging and thanks to the fact that the desert is bereft of inconvenient vegetation cover. Sure, the dating process of these ancient sites are a novelty idea. You can be forgiven for attesting these places as simply being animal traps and that very well may be the case, but we must also consider the inconsiderable to better access our thoughts on such a plain yet taboo subject matter. According to the researchers investigating this site, during the Iron Age, the settlement developed into a walled city-state, known in part for its great temple to the goddess Ishtar, but worship at the site probably went back much further. The enigmatic triangular platform was surrounded by dry stone exterior walls, one of which contains two niches. The triangular shape was filled with large irregular stones. That filler didn't come from collapsing walls. They were part of the original construction. That is, the platform had been filled with the stones from the outset. These results indicate that the platform had been built in several phases, 8,000 to 7,000 years ago. And beneath the stone filling lay a very, very eerie discovery. And this is why the researchers believe it was sacrificial because one or more human bodies, apparently adults, have been found here. The condition of the bones within the platform was too decrepit to ascertain much, but the archaeologists did note that some of the long bones had been deformed by the weight of the stone and sediment atop them. That indicated the bones still contained collagen when put in their final resting place, meaning they hadn't been completely dried out yet. Their organization in the repository shows that this is a secondary deposit, that the body had decomposed elsewhere, and that only certain bones were selected and placed in the platform, with the disposition of these human remains was probably a strong symbolic importance from the early days of the use of the platform, which may have been a place of commemoration at the time. The secondary burial within this enigmatic platform suggests that the monumental edifice served a ritual purpose, likely a funerary function. In addition, the platform was oriented along a west-northwest to east-southeast axis, corresponding to the winter sunrise and sunset, and most intriguingly, according to the researchers reporting in the journal Antiquity who say, it's monumentally a long duration of use, over at least two millennia, suggests that this is a place of collective commemoration for social and ritual activities, as well as a material anchor for social memory and identity construction. Anomalous shells found here also suggest a wealth of well-traveled trade, since this is the middle of the desert, including an amulet in the shape of a scarab that suggests it was from Egypt and that a path through the Sinai must have existed between the two regions all those thousands of years ago. But what do you guys think about this latest discovery in Saudi Arabia? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching. In terms of plates, there are only two. There's one frontal, and there's one parietal. There are not two parietals, only one. The volume of the skull is 1,500 cubic centimeters, 
so 25% larger than the Inca skull, shown as the uh, example of what normality is.